I think it's important first that we identify EGFR mutations up front for our patients with advanced lung adenocarcinoma. If they're positive, we obviously want to offer a tyrosine kinase inhibitor with either fatinib, gefitinib, or lotinib. What we've seen from all of these uh, agents is that they improve response rates, progression-free survival, and importantly, quality of life versus chemotherapy. Anytime I'm talking to a patient, I always integrate a quality of life discussion about in the context of what therapy I'm giving them. So these three drugs all have uh, superiority over chemotherapy, um, but they have some toxicities, and I think that's important that the data would suggest that they improve quality of life versus chemotherapy, but they have associated toxicities that we also need to consider when we're also considering improving the quality of life. Uh, and the most common toxicities that we see with these tyrosine kinase inhibitors are rash and diarrhea. Um, and, and some of these can be profound, uh, where we really have to be aggressive in the management. But I'd say all in all, most of my patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer, uh, their quality of life improves dramatically when I start that tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Even if they do have rash and diarrhea, uh, they seem to have less symptom burden, less shortness of breath, less cough, less pain when they get a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And, and again, it just speaks volumes to the importance of identifying these patients up front. You have to do the testing. You can't give the drug unless you identify the mutation. You can rest assured, if you identify the mutation, you can improve their quality of life, even if they have some toxicity with the drug, by delivering a TKI. So I think the message here is these drugs work. They're better in terms of tolerability. They're better in terms of quality of life than chemotherapy. Uh, but you can't get it unless you have the mutation. If the patient already has a EFR mutation, then um, for sure we have already multiple studies that show that the, the best choice is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor instead of chemotherapy. So we don't use chemotherapy any, any longer. And among the options, you have three FDA-approved tyrosine kinase inhibitors in America, and um, there is one more approved overseas, and you have to make your choice of what's the best agent based on this. Most of the doctors consider these three agents uh, similar, and there is maybe difference in toxicity. And based on that, or based on your own experience, we make the choice of which one is the one that you want to use. Um, it will be misleading to say that one is better than the rest, and, uh, or one is inferior than the rest. Uh, for example, uh, the oldest one, Jefitini, uh, they use a dose that is uh, not is far from the maximum toxic dose, so they give us the sensation that is the one that is easy to tolerate. There is less diarrhea, less rash. Um, there is another one called afatinib uh, that has been very successful, even rescue patients that have failed other tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So we have this sensation that maybe it's stronger, and uh, that's why based on the patient you decide to be aggressive or you decide to be more conservative and that's the way that we choose among these three agents that are in, available in America. Now, for example, erlotinib is the most popular in America um, because it was approved before uh, uh, when gefitinib was not available and afatinib is not available. So I, I don't know how is the market share but probably erlotinib is the most popular in the United States nowadays. When we identify that EGFR mutation for a patient with lung cancer, the goals of therapy, unfortunately, are still palliative. I want to start with that. I mean, patients who, who are savvy, who have found out that they have a genetic alteration in which they, we can give a targeted therapy, they say, well, you're going to cure me with that targeted therapy. We're not. Uh, but we can certainly extend survival to unprecedented uh, time frames and if we look at the survival uh, of patients now compared to five or ten years ago. Uh, what I tell patients is that, the, that we can uh, improve their quality of life, we can extend their life, we can improve probably their symptom burden, uh, but we can't cure them. Uh, and I think that's important to have that balanced message. Uh, but the goal is palliative, but the goal is, is to extend life, to make life better, uh, and to palliate symptoms. And I think that's achievable with the tyrosine kinase inhibitors that we have right now. Uh, I think it's important that, that we, we, we remain optimistic with these drugs, but realistic, and, and balance that message. And with a patient who's EGFR positive, I tend to be more on the optimistic side than I am uh, with perhaps other patients that don't have uh, genetic alterations that we can target.